cybercultural computer culture is the culture that has emerged, or is emerging, from the use of computer networks for communication, entertainment, and business. Internet culture is also the study of various social phenomena associated with the Internet and other new forms of the network communication, such as online communities, online multiplayer gaming, wearable computing, social gaming, social media, mobile apps, augmented reality, and texting, and includes issues related to identity, privacy, and network formation. Overview. Since the boundaries of cyber culture are difficult to define, the term is used flexibly, and its application to specific circumstances can be controversial. It generally refers at least to the cultures of virtual communities, but extends to a wide range of cultural issues relating to cyber topics, e.g., cybernetics, and the perceived or predicted cyborgization of the human body and human society itself. It can also embrace associated intellectual and cultural movements, such as cyborg theory and cyberpunk. The term often incorporates an implicit anticipation of the future. The Oxford English Dictionary lists the earliest usage of the term cyberculture in 1963, when A.M. Hilton wrote the following, In the era of cyberculture, all the plows pull themselves and the fried chickens fly right onto our plates. This example, and all others, up through 1995 are used to support the definition of cyberculture as the social conditions brought about by automation and computerization. The American Heritage Dictionary broadens the sense in which cyberculture is used by defining it as the culture arising from the use of computer networks as for communication, entertainment, work, and business. This cyberculture may be purely an online culture or it may span both virtual and physical worlds. This is to say that cyberculture is a culture endemic to online communities. It is not just the culture that results from computer use, but culture that is directly mediated by the computer. Another way to envision cyberculture is as the electronically enabled linkage of like-minded, but potentially geographically disparate persons. Cyberculture is a wide social and cultural movement closely linked to advanced information science and information technology, their emergence, development and rise to social and cultural prominence between the 1960s and the 1990s. Cyberculture was influenced at its genesis by those early users of the Internet, frequently including the architects of the original project. These individuals were often guided in their actions by the hacker ethic. While early cyberculture was based on a small cultural sample and its ideals, the modern cyberculture is a much more diverse group of users and the ideals that they espouse. Numerous specific concepts of cyberculture have been formulated by such authors as Lev Manovich, Arturo Escobar and Fred Forrest. However, most of these concepts concentrate only on certain aspects, and they do not cover these in great detail. Some authors aim to achieve a more comprehensive understanding distinguished between early and contemporary cyberculture, or between cyberculture as the cultural context of information technology and cyberculture as a particular approach to the study of the cultural plus technology complex. Manifestations of cyberculture. Manifestations of cyberculture include various human interactions mediated by computer networks. They can be activities, pursuits, games, places, and metaphors, and include a diverse base of applications. Some are supported by specialized software and others work on commonly accepted web protocols. Examples include but are not limited to qualities of cyberculture. First and foremost, cyberculture derives from traditional notions of culture, as the roots of the word imply. In non-cyberculture, it would be odd to speak of a single, monolithic culture. In cyberculture, by extension, searching for a single thing that is cyberculture would likely be problematic. The notion that there is a single, definable cyberculture is likely the complete dominance of early cyber territory by affluent North Americans. Writing by early proponents of cyberspace tends to reflect this assumption. 
The ethnography of cyberspace is an important aspect of cyberculture that does not reflect a single unified culture. It is not a monolithic or placeless cyberspace, rather, it is numerous new technologies and capabilities used by diverse people. In diverse real-world locations, it is malleable, perishable, and can be shaped by the vagaries of external forces on its users. For example, the laws of physical world governments, social norms, the architecture of cyberspace, and market forces shape the way cybercultures form and evolve. As with physical world cultures, cybercultures lend themselves to identification and study. There are several qualities that cybercultures share that make them warrant the prefix cyber. Some of those qualities are that cyberculture is a community mediated by ICTs, is culture mediated by computer screens, relies heavily on the notion of information and knowledge exchange, depends on the ability to manipulate tools to a degree not present in other forms of culture, allows vastly expanded weak ties and has been criticized for overly emphasizing the same multiplies the number of eyeballs on a given problem, beyond that which would be possible using traditional means, given physical, geographic, and temporal constraints, is of cognitive and social culture, not a geographic one, is the product of like-minded people finding a common place to interact, is inherently more fragile than traditional forms of community and culture. Thus, cyberculture can be generally defined as the set of technologies, practices, attitudes, modes of thought, and values that developed with cyberspace. Identity, architectures of credibility. Cyberculture, like culture in general, relies on establishing identity and credibility. However, in the absence of direct physical interaction, it could be argued that the process for such establishment is more difficult. How does cyberculture rely on an established identity and credibility? This relationship is two-way, with identity and credibility being both used to define the community in cyberspace and to be created within and by online communities. In some senses, online credibility is established in much the same way that it is established in the offline world. However, since these are two separate worlds, it is not surprising that there are differences in their mechanisms and interactions of the markers found in each. Following the model put forth by Lawrence Lessig in Code, version 2.0, the architecture of a given online community may be the single most important factor regulating the establishment of credibility within online communities. Some factors may be anonymous versus known, linked to physical identity versus internet-based identity only, unrated commentary system versus rated commentary system, positive feedback-oriented versus mixed feedback-oriented, Moderated versus unmoderated, anonymous versus known many sites allow anonymous commentary, where the user id attached to the comment is something like guest or anonymous user. In an architecture that allows anonymous posting about other works, the credibility being impacted is only that of the product for sale. The original opinion expressed the code written, the video, or other entity about which comments are made. Sites that require known postings can vary widely from simply requiring some kind of name to be associated with the comment to requiring registration, wherein the identity of the registrant is visible to other readers of the comment. These known identities allow and even require commentators to be aware of their own credibility based on the fact that other users will associate particular content and styles with their identity. By definition, then, all blog postings are known in that the blog exists in a consistently defined virtual location, which helps to establish an identity around which credibility can gather. Conversely, anonymous postings are inherently incredible. Note that a known identity need have nothing to do with a given identity in the physical world. Linked to physical identity versus internet-based identity only architectures can require that physical identity be associated with commentary, as in Lessig's example of Council Connect. 
However, to require linkage to physical identity, many more steps must be taken and safeguards for that collected information must be established. The users must have more trust of the sites collecting the information, irrespective of safeguards. As with Council Connect, using physical identities links credibility across the frames of the Internet and real space, influencing the behaviors of those who contribute in those spaces. However, even purely Internet-based identities have credibility. Just as Lessig describes linkage to a character or a particular online gaming environment, nothing inherently links a person or group to their Internet-based persona, but credibility is, and rather than bought. And because this takes time and not fungible, it becomes increasingly hard to create a new persona. Unrated commentary system versus rated commentary system In some architectures those who review or offer comments can, in turn, be rated by other users. This technique offers the ability to regulate the credibility of given authors by subjecting their comments to direct, quantifiable, approval, ratings. Positive feedback-oriented versus mixed feedback-oriented architectures can be oriented around positive feedback or a mix of both positive and negative feedback. While a particular user may be able to equate fewer stars with a negative rating, the semantic difference is potentially important. The ability to actively rate an entity negatively may violate laws or norms that are important in the jurisdiction in which the Internet property is important. The more public a site, the more important this concern may be, as noted by Goldsmith and Wu regarding eBay. Moderated versus unmoderated architectures can also be oriented to give editorial control to a group or individual. Many email lists are worked in this fashion. In these situations, the architecture usually allows, but does not require that contributions be moderated. Further, moderation may take two different forms, reactive or proactive. In the reactive mode, an editor removes posts, reviews, or content that is deemed offensive after it has been placed on the site or list. In the proactive mode, an editor must review all contributions before they are made public. In a moderated setting, credibility is often given to the moderator. However, that credibility can be damaged by appearing to edit in a heavy-handed way, whether reactive or proactive. In an unmoderated setting, credibility lies with the contributors alone. It should be noted that the very existence of an architecture allowing moderation may lend credibility to the forum being used, or it may take away credibility. Cyberculture Studies the field of cyberculture studies examines the topics explained above, including the communities emerging within the networked spaces sustained by the use of modern technology. Students of cyberculture engage with political, philosophical, sociological, and psychological issues that arise from the networked interactions of human beings by humans who act in various relations to information science and technology. Donna Haraway, Sadie Plant, Manuel de Landa, Bruce Sterling, Kevin Kelly, Wolfgang Schirmacher, Pierre Levy, David Gunkel, Victor J. Vitanza, Gregory Ulmer, Charles D. Laughlin, and Jean Baudrillard are among the key theorists and critics who have produced relevant work that speaks to, or has influenced studies in, cyberculture. Following the lead of Rob Kitchen, in his work Cyberspace, the world in the wires, we might view cyberculture from different critical perspectives. These perspectives include futurism or techno-utopianism, technological determinism, social constructionism, postmodernism, poststructuralism, and feminist theory.